revolutionary technologies that we cannot envision at the moment, not only mitigate the current trend of climate change, but will in fact reverse the current trend. Humanity would have been devastated for a prolonged period of time. Hello, I'm Odette Galol. I'm here at Penguin to answer some big questions. The relationship between diversity and prosperity is an intricate one. We follow this relationship in the course of human existence. It is quite apparent that over time, more diverse societies at the upper hand in terms of economic prosperity. Namely, diversity is associated with two conflicting effects. On the one hand, diversity contributes to cross-fertilization of ideas and innovations. But on the other hand, diversity can have an adverse effect on social cohesiveness. It diminishes trust, generate disagreement about the desirable public goods, and consequently it's a source of conflict. And given the fact that these two contradictory effects are prevalent at any point in time, extreme level of diversity and extreme level of homogeneity tends to be less beneficial for economic prosperity. So in the course of human history, societies that had the sweet spot level of diversity, they wanted balance between the benefits and the adverse consequences of diversity at the upper hand. So if we view the world, say, around the Middle Ages, societies such as China, Japan, and Korea had the level of diversity that was conducive for prosperity. And the reason is that this was a time period in which technology did not advance very rapidly. And consequently, in this time period, the benefits of homogeneity in terms of um, social cohesiveness outweigh the potential costs in terms of the lack of innovativeness. But as we move into the modern world, and as technological progress started to become more and more, more rapid, diversity became more important in permitting people to navigate this rapidly changing technological environment. And as a result of it, societies like the ones that we see in Great Britain or in the US are having the level of diversity that is conducive for economic development in the sense that, again, they have the sweet spot level of diversity that is conducive for development. Now, as humanity continues its uh, relentless march forward, it will be the case that diversity will become even more important. So it is important to note that if we review the history of humankind since the emergence of modern human in Africa 300,000 years ago, Humanity experienced great adverse uh, shocks. The Black Death, for instance, decimated nearly 40% of the European population. World War I and World War II uh, decimated nearly 80 million people. The Spanish flu was devastating. The Great Depression was devastating. But what we learn from these episodes is that despite these great tragedies, despite the fact that humanity in the short run, was devastated by these events, and the individuals that went through these events were devastated perhaps for decades and, and beyond. Humanity as a whole, the grand arc of human progress, was not affected in the long run. It should be quite clear that none of these events will ultimately derail humanity as a whole from its relentless march forward. This will be setbacks that could last months, years, perhaps decades, but ultimately humanity will survive from these future crises and the relentless march of, of humanity appears to me to a large extent unstoppable. So it's very interesting to note that uh, the prosperity that was generated in the world economy in the past 200 years is associated with rapid technological progress. But this rapid technological progress is associated with an increase in the demand for human capital since 
human capital and education, broadly speaking, is essential in order to permit individuals to cope with this rapidly changing technological environment. Now, since human capital is unevenly distributed across uh, the society, technological progress inevitably led to enormous inequality in society. And in order to mitigate this inequality, resources will have to be channeled to assure that the society is characterized by equality of opportunities. That any individual that would like to acquire human capital, any individuals that would like to invest properly in education can do so. And if proper investment will take place, inequality inevitably will be mitigated. Humans, like any other species, were driven to a large extent, subconsciously or consciously, by an attempt to propagate their uh, genetic makeup. And in the past, individuals were not concerned about having incredible amount of wealth. Instead, they were concerned about, about having high reproductive success. So they exerted great amount of work effort in order to ultimately be able to have more surviving children that will carry, to a large extent, their genetic makeup. Now, this was true over most of human existence. But recently, in the course of the fertility decline in the 1870s in, the, in, in Western Europe and later in other societies across the globe, in fact, the relationship between resources and reproductive success was eliminated. And consequently, in order to have an imprint on society and in order to propagate the identity of individuals over time, individuals started to focus on wealth as opposed to high reproductive success. So wealth became a substitute to what existed before, which is high reproductive success. So for most of human existence, we see that humanity is being challenged by incredible uh, catastrophes, incredible tragedies. And nevertheless, humanity ultimately is able to recover from each of these catastrophes and to maintain its relentless march forward. So when we think about the roots of uh, climate change at the moment, the roots has to do with, uh, with the process of industrialization. Namely, at a certain point, industrialization takes place. Industrialization is associated with industrial pollution, and this pollution ultimately generates the patterns that we experience at the moment. But what brought about climate change and what brought about the Industrial Revolution. In the course of human history, we see a gradual acceleration in technological progress. This technological acceleration is bringing about industrialization and adverse, potential adverse consequences in the context of climate change. But at the same time, acceleration in technological progress is generating three additional forces that could mitigate the adverse consequences of climate change. First, human capital formation, enormous increase in the level of the education of the society. Second, the power of innovations, an incredible ability for scientists to innovate and to develop technologies that can mitigate many of the potential adverse consequences that humanity may face. And third, the fertility decline, an incredible decline in fertility, and ultimately in population growth that frees, as I said earlier, the growth process from the counterbalancing effect of population. I'm confident that the power of innovation that is at our possession at the moment will be sufficient in the course of the next few decades to generate revolutionary technologies that we cannot envision at the moment that will ultimately not only mitigate the current trend of climate change, but will in fact reverse the current trend. So again, over most of human existence, we see that resource constraints is to a large extent the matter of inventions. Science that when society is uh, hit by limited resources, 
and humans are forced to innovate and ultimately these innovations are permitting resources to expand again, humanity to expand again, humanity is faced by resource constraint and again we see another cycle of innovations. So we can see it for instance 12,000 years ago in the course of the transition into agriculture. Humanity is marching out of Africa 60 to 90,000 years ago, populating many of the geographical niches on planet Earth. But ultimately, there are no virgin territories to be conquered. And as a result of it, hunter-gatherer tribes start to bang into one another, resources are starting, starting to decline, and at a certain point, humanity and individuals must innovate. And the innovation of the time is, in fact, to learn how to domesticate plants and animals and ultimately how to generate from each acre of land much more resources than existed before. And the same process is repeating itself in the course of human history. And in this respect, as I said, we will see the same type of processes in the future and innovations will continue to persist because of the issue of resource constraints. So that's a complex question, and I suppose that if I would have been asked these questions decades ago, my answer would have been fundamentally different than my answer today. But at this stage of my life, I feel to, to a large extent uh, the meaning of my life and the meaning of life in general is the ability to transmit the torch to the next generation in a way that this torch will not be extinguished and perhaps will be more durable than otherwise, with the hope that down the roads, decades from now, centuries from now, perhaps a little longer than that, this torch will be uh, infinitely lived, individuals will be infinitely lived, and my uh, successors will be able to benefit from uh, my step of transmitting my torch from the previous generation to the next generation. Thanks for watching. You can get my book, The Journey of Humanity, by clicking on the link below. Please subscribe to Penguin for similar videos of this sort.